Hello and welcome to Garden Chatter, where we connect gardeners, bloggers, and experts so we can all grow and learn together. Tonight we have a great show. We're going to be talking about herbs, growing them, preserving them, best way to handle them, and that is with Beth Bilstrom. So she's joining us as our special guest tonight. And also Bren, my co-host Bren Haas, has been working on setting up a new page because we're trying to get one place where everybody can make <laughs> comments. And so she's going to tell how you can join the conversation and leave questions or comments. How are you doing, Bren? Not too bad, Adam. Thank you. I'm really excited to have Beth on tonight. Um, she's really fun to follow on social media. And uh, so we'll learn more about her in a minute. But OK, so here we go. If you go to connectsharegrow.com, you will see a huge ad for tonight's event. You click on the ad. It will take you a to a page that's dedicated to our presentation tonight. And on that page, you're going to find the live video. You may need to click it if there's an arrow there, and that will start it playing. Um, also, there's a spot on that same page where you can go ahead and you can tweet us um, and Please feel free to ask questions on the blog itself because I'm monitor monitoring it tonight. And uh, ask away. We're excited. Or even just come on and say, hey, um, let's, let us know that you're out there listening. And uh, how's that? I think we that, that's good, right? <laughs> I think that'll do. <laughs> yeah. So hashtag garden chatter. Yep. And come and find us and say hello, leave a question yeah. or comment. <laughs> um, so Beth, welcome to our show. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, Adam. How are you guys? We're doing well. Well, maybe we could just start out by hearing a little bit of your story and where you're located and like what, how you got into gardening or what you're growing and all that good stuff. Alrighty, sure. I uh, right now I'm not from Minnesota, but I I live in Minnesota. I live just outside of the uh, Twin Cities area, so I'm uh, kind of in that small town. Uh, but also a little bit of an urban feel, kind of an area. I uh, garden in zone 4, 4B, so this is the coldest area I've ever gardened in, and I've done that for 15 years, 10 years, in the house that we're in right now. Um, so I small space garden. My entire yard, including my house, is a quarter of an acre. So it's a small space, um, but at this point, after 10 years, um, over 50% of my yard is garden, you know, of the total area is, is garden. So I really, I like it. I really do like it. Um, but the way I really got into it and got into herbs in this house is when we, we built, so it was uh, new construction, and um, so... The soil wasn't so great, and it was cold, and there was nothing around you. You don't really realize how good you have it to garden if there's like wind blocks, like other bushes or houses or anything. There was like nothing. <laughs> so I started, and I started with a native garden. It took a while to get going, um, but I really wanted to do edibles, and I um, and uh, I really wanted to garden for uh, fragrance and all those kinds of things. And container gardening was really getting popular at that time. And so I found this really great book called uh, Bountiful, uh, Bountiful Containers um, by McGee and Stuckey. And it just had all these wonderful ideas of things you could put into containers. Um, you could put tomatoes in there and you could put tomatoes and basil in there and you could just start combining all of these really great things in containers that I had never thought of. And it worked ideal for me because since um, I had like nothing in my landscape, I had to like move my containers around in order to get them to grow. Like I had to start them in the spring on my front porch because it was more um, sheltered and then I would have to move them to my back because that was more sun for as the season went and then as it got super hot in August then I would have to find, we did have one maple tree and I would put them under the tree and so container gardening was really cool and I really liked that 
Um, and then that moved me into my next step um, of when I started really looking at edibles and I found that whole concept of the potager um, gardens, the kitchen garden. Mm -hmm. um, in America we call it a kitchen garden, but the cool thing about a, a potager is a French term and it really means um, a pot of soup, like a restorative pot of soup. And that really got me going into the garden that I have now because it takes gardening from being just purposeful, um, you tell it, you know, um, utilitarian, you know, you, you know, utilizing it, and it branches it into this whole place where it's like the focus of your landscape, and it's restorative, and it's purposeful, and it's fun, and it's jazzy. And that's where I am right now, is taking my little spot on the earth and making it as fun for all the plants and wildlife and animals and all that as I can. So that's where I'm at. That's nice when you have, nice you, when you, you, have you pretty much had a pretty clean had slate, a slate to do your gardening with, didn't you? I did. I yeah. did. You know, you could come in and um, my one of my sons said the other night, Wow, this is really where you have talked about it being for yeah. so long that he can yeah. really see that happening now. Um, and I think as a gardener, we take a certain amount of, you know, pride in that, don't we? Yeah, we yeah. Like I think it's cool that your teenage son noticed. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's awesome. You must cook some really good meals with those herbs, right? <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Are are the majority of the herbs you grow uh, perennial or annual? I, it seems like most of the ones that I get are annual, but that might just be what's available in my area. So I was just curious, do you, do you have many that are perennial? Um, I do as far as, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of herbs. I think tonight we were going to try to talk mainly about culinary cooking herbs. Right. Um, but there's a lot of different types of herbs. A big definition of herb is anything that can be used for fragrance, flavor, or medicine. So some of my perennial herbs, I have yarrow, that's a perennial, uh, meadowsweet, that's a perennial, um, thyme is a culinary herb, and that's a perennial. Um, but a lot of them are annuals. Um, my basil is an annual. I don't grow chives. You can grow chives as a perennial. They tend to get a bit out of hand like oregano does. Huh. So I, um, I grow them in containers and I bring those containers in the house. Um, during the winter. Very cool. I'm getting ready to tweet a picture of my, I think you pronounce it rue, R-U-E. Uh -huh. Okay, I didn't know what it was when I bought it, but it, it is an herb, right? Yeah. I have no clue how to use it, but <laughs> the pretty <laughs> yellow flowers that are going on right now, I'll tell you what, the butterflies and the bees love it. They do. So what do you do with rue? They do. You know, I'll be honest, I don't really, rue I believe is more of a medicinal type okay. herb. I think okay. they really use it there. Um, it's not really um, a culinary herb. Okay. Um, I believe it's one of those herbs that you do have to be pretty careful with okay. um, because it can cause some skin irritations for oh. some people. Hmm. Um, but like you said, the pollinators yeah. love it, you know, love and it. so there's a lot of herbs that you know you just grow for that reason. I grow borage, and you can definitely you know use the leaves of borage and make a tea. Um, you can spice up your salad with them. You can uh, take the flowers and candy them. You can do a lot of different culinary things with borage, but okay. truthfully, I grow it for the bees. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Do. So this might be a little bit of a two-part question, but what uh -huh. would be maybe some of the best herbs for someone that's beginning? And also maybe tied to that would be, um, what are some great herbs to grow in containers? And then are there any that don't do as well in containers? Just yeah, that's a big question. Um, I'm going to do a little show and tell with that question, if you're OK with that. Because one of the hottest things going right now and easiest things to grow is basil. Um, 
And uh, the thing that's so great about basil is the more basil you have, if you're a pesto lover, then the more pesto um, you can make. In my house, we love pesto. Yeah. Um, and so if you're just getting into herbs, I would really recommend basil. Um, now, in my area, zone uh, 4B, there has been a little bit of trouble with what they call the traditional basil, which looks a lot like this, although this is a different variety, uh, that if you've tried to grow traditional basil in the last couple of years and um, it's wilted or it's gotten fuzzy brown spots on it and you think, oh, maybe I overwatered or something, what you really have is what's called downy mildew, which is different than powdery mildew. You know, we all know powdery mildew. It gets that, you know. Yeah. That yeah. But this this is a little bit different. Um, and it's really, from what I've heard, it's across the United States, but I think some areas have been more heavily hit than hmm. other areas. Um, and so the reason why I bring that up is because in addition to the traditional basil, there's so many different fun um, other basils that you can grow. This one looks, and I, don't, I hope people can see it, this one looks like your traditional basil, but it's actually um, a dulce basil. And I grew this from seed. Um, basil is really easy if you want to start growing your own to grow from seed. You just have to remember to keep it warm. They like it warmer. Start your seeds warm on the bottom. Um, and let it germinate in the warm area. Now this one's a little bit different. This is um, called a fine verde. And you can see it looks a little bit different and it has a little bit lighter of a taste, but it'll make a great basil, um, a great pesto, I mean. And this one I like, and you can, you know, look at how different they look. This is um, a Queen Sheba. <laughs> And yeah, I like this because you know. And if you grow from seeds, this is great. You, I could have not seen this in a garden center, even in my own um, herb farm garden center that I go to. But because I grew from seed, I was able to do this. Ah, um, I have people. a couple other ones that I grow that are actually going to get bright red flowers on them, and they'll attract the hummingbirds. Um, so I'll grow herbs for me. And then I'll grow some for the pollinators as well and just leave those out. Um, so I would really suggest, you know, if you're looking for something new to get into, start with basil. Grow one type and then you can start growing a variety of types. You can mix and match. Um, if you want to make pesto, they don't all have to be one variety. You could get some from, you know, pick leaves from all your different ones and mm -hmm. make a really interesting pesto. Yum. So are you you're saying the majority of basils are easiest grown from seed, right? Well, I'm saying if you're going to grow from seed, they are easy to grow from seed, okay. but you can also get them as right. small plants and start that way if that's sure. the way you want to. Sure. But if you want to start anything from seed, they're one to, to start right. with. But you had, she had a good point. You can get more variety of herbs and other types of plants when you do start from seed, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I just, oh, that's okay. I just had a quick question on the, the basil seed because when I grow it, it seems like it takes a long time to germinate. Does that seem like it's true? I mean, it does come up, but I just have to be very patient. You do have to be patient. Um, like I said, it could be too. It likes it warmer. Okay. So I know, like I grow mine in my basement. Um, I started a little bit later than all of my other seeds because it likes it warmer. And sometimes I will actually put a space heater down there to make the air warmer because that's what it wants to once it starts growing. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is once you, you know, once you get it going and you do get it to germinate, once it gets those four true leaves, you want to um, pick off like the top up here and that will that will bush it out so it doesn't it isn't too you know stringy um, but like I said it likes it warmer and that could be one of the reasons why maybe like how long is yours taking to germinate Adam? Oh it seems like maybe a couple weeks just longer than other seeds sometimes I'm, I'm like oh they're never gonna 
you know, German <laughs> men. You just have to be patient. Um, so anyway, if you're starting, yeah. If you have my experience, you need to be patient because yeah, they, yeah. they take a little longer than some some others. They do. And and another tip, and I kind of want to throw this out because um, I see it a lot. Um, you know, we've gotten into the microgreens, which are really cool, and you mm -hmm. like you'll take a dish and you'll put all these basils and things in it, and it looks really pretty and it's really cool. And if you're going to eat them as microgreens, that's great. But if you're going to transplant those, mm -hmm. they don't really like that. <laughs> they don't like to be that close and have their roots so intertwined like that. Cilantro is another one like that, that you have to be careful of those roots when you transplant them. So if you plan to grow them big, you should grow them more in separate containers or, or just two, you know, or get them into plugs as fast because they don't like their roots messed with. Um, okay. Cilantro too, sometimes people have a lot of difficulty with cilantro. I had a lot of difficulty when I first started with cilantro um, and I found out a few things. Um, one, you know, it definitely likes it cooler, um, so look for seeds that are known to be slow bolt, um, slow bolting. Two, if you can direct sow it into your ground, it's better because it doesn't like to be transplanted. If you are going to transplant it, you want to make sure not to mess with the root system as much and just, you know, get it out of that container and into the ground. You're probably a great one to use that jiffy pot with that you soak the jiffy pot, mm -hmm. pull the bottom off and the top so that you're not disturbing it so much. Oh, okay. okay. Um, back back to the roux again. I just wanted to do a shout out to Lisa's plant guru. She uh, she commented on our Twitter saying that the rue is a beautiful foliage plant. Um, she didn't know it flowered though, and she's going to get some because she she really wants to encourage the bees in her garden. So, thank you, Lisa. <laughs> hey, um, Beth, what about other types of herbs to make pesto with? Because I know it doesn't have to be only with basil. Do you have any others that you like to make pesto with? You know, really, you can take any of the green leafy herbs and make a pesto. Uh, we have known, you know, traditionally we think of pesto as basil, but pesto really just means an herb paste. And so you can use, you know, oregano, um, you can use um, marjoram, which is really good. Um, in fact, I'm going to there's a new, not a newer, but you're seeing this in the store, um, zatar, which is a type of marjoram, and this would make a really great pesto because it's uh, it's just not as spicy as your oregano is. It's a little bit lighter. Um, so you can do that. You can mix if you wanted to add a little bit of chive in or um, I don't know if I would do one straight out of sage. I think that would be a little strong for me. Maybe if somebody else is a real sagey kind of person. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. But so. Sounds good. Well, what about soil? I mean, is, is there what sort of, um, just for basil or other herbs, is there some considerations on where to plant them and soil? When you plant your herbs, you want to remember that traditionally most of them like a Mediterranean type culture. That's where they came from. So they like a more a drier, looser, sandier kind of soil. Um, they don't need a tremendous amount of nutrients, although they do need some. And they like to have somewhat of a breeze. They do. Um, some of them like full sun, some of them like, you know, not so much sun. Um, but when you start with your soil, and if you're going to start in containers, um, which is, like I said, it's a great way to begin growing herbs because it's flexible. You can put them where you need them. You can put them right outside your doorstep. Um, but you can make, um, I just make my own. Um, I do use I do use peat moss. I know that some people that, you know, that's kind of, you know, we're kind of getting away from that, but that's just what I have used um, at this point. And then mix in, so it's two parts peat moss, one part um, perlite, and then you can do one part um, vermiculite. And that makes a real loose type of container soil that you can use. 
Um, I then do an initial fertilizing with fish oil, um, visual emulsion in the beginning of the season, and then another one like in the middle. But you don't need a lot of fertilizer because you don't want them to really bush out too fast. Um, you'll lose a lot of flavor and stuff that way if you do that. Okay. I just um, I just tweeted you a picture of my uh, sage. Do you remember I was showing you buds on Twitter that it was going to bloom? Oh, yeah. It bloomed. Uh -huh. it's, that's a, that's a, <laughs> I've never had that happen before. My sage usually dies back, but for some weird reason, this variety, uh, it was there after the winter, and the blooms are gorgeous. I just tweeted it on the uh, hashtag garden chatter. So, and the bees love that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> they do, they do, and some of your sages, I mean, there's so many different types, so it's kind of cool, you must have gotten an early spring one, yeah. and so did it bloom, what, like a purple blue, is that what yeah, you Yeah, it's, it's kind and of a my violet. Phone's in the other room. <laughs> I wish I'll have to tweet the name of it later, I think it was one from uh, Ball Hort, I believe. Oh, uh, okay. Or Pan American Seed, I'm, I'm not sure, I'll tweet that out later. <laughs> Very but cool. It, it's gorgeous. Yeah. But so I wonder. I wonder. Can you can you eat the flowers too? Do you know? You can eat the flowers. Yeah, you can eat the flowers. You can put them in your salad. Um, right. You can decorate desserts with them if you you know, especially if they're a real pretty blue and you make like a, a cake with a white frosting or something. You know, I mean, you could Ooh. decorate um, decorate your cake with them. So you know, just and like I said, they are. You know, all of them, the varieties have a little bit of a different taste to it. So you might want to taste it just to see how strong it is. Okay. You know? mm -hmm. That makes sense. And then another shout out from Twitter tonight, um, Shelly of Guild the Garden. Garden. Uh, she's saying thank you for the cilantro tip that you shared. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome, Shelly. Yeah. <laughs> So now if we've grown our uh, herbs, you have some, what, is there anything we should do for harvesting and handling them? What, what are some thoughts on that? Oh, well, yeah. Um, well, of course, if you're going to grow them, you should really use them. Although I have to admit, the first year I grew them, I think I was a little intimidated by them. I don't know why that is, but I've heard, heard that. You know, herbs can be a little intimidating. Um, I wasn't quite sure what to do with them. I think by the end of the year I made some pesto and things like that. But I think part of it I was just really, really kind of surprised how well they came up and I just kept watching, I guess, to see what to do with them. Um, but you should definitely use them. I prefer really to use mine fresh as much as possible. Um, so, you know, put them in your salsa, make pico de gallo, sure. um, put them in your salad dressings, you know, make your pesto, you know, make beverages of them. Use them up as much as you can during the season. You do want to try to get to them um, in before they flower, you know, that is best, but understand that they're a plant and they are going to flower, and so if they do they do, you know, um, like your basil and stuff, you want to be picking those flowers off, but eventually the plant is going to outdo you. It is, and it's just going to flower, and it's okay, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, but, you know, so you just want to keep on it. You can use your chai flowers. You can use all those different, um, all those different parts of it. Um, when it comes to harvesting, mm -hmm. I have a few little tips here. But I didn't know right in the beginning, and so I want to show everybody these um, because a lot of times when I would bring, you know, my herbs in and I would, you know, try to get them off the stem, I would kind of do that thing that you do with petals, you know, you pick them off one at a time, you know, like he loves me, he loves me not kind of thing, and you make a little pile out of them, you know, and you're sitting there, if you've got rosemary, I mean, you're picking for a while, and I, I had three boys, and you know, my house was full, I just really didn't have it that much time. Finally, somebody said, you know what, you can shock your herbs, <laughs> you know, you can take them like this, hold the stem, now this one's wet, so it's not going as well, and just pull on it, and it will all come off. I hope I did that slow enough so it wasn't blurry, but that's rosemary, and so if you snip it and just go like this fast, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll, those leaves will come off just like that. 
and you can do it. This is oregano. You know, you can do the same way. Just pull on those leaves, and they come right off. And boom, you're ready to, you know, chop them up. And that's just such a nicer way to do it, especially if you have a large quantity that you want to harvest. Because in those types of things, you want to use the leaves. You really don't want to use the stems. Um, so when you're actually hard, when you're taking the leaves off, you know that's a good thing. Um, when you're at your plant and you're looking at how to harvest. Mm -hmm. You want to remember your square stemmed ones from your mint family. Um, you want to clip those mid stem, like above, right above a leaf, because that will make the plant branch out. Um, if it's your other ones, like your parsley, um, those you want to clip more down by the soil. So then it will regrow from the soil. They won't regrow midway. Very so cool. Here's a few tips. So um, our friend over on Facebook, Garden Chat, has a question for you. She says, what is thyme good for, and what's the best way to use it? And that's uh, Sue Ellen over on the Facebook page. Um, a lot of people use thyme with uh, your chicken. You know, you'll okay. use like lemon thyme with your chicken. Um, people also make a tea, lots of tea out of your out of thyme. Um, of course, you know you hear rosemary and thyme; those two mm -hmm. go together very well. Right. Um, I use uh, rosemary, thyme, and garlic a lot of times on my potatoes or in um, a yep. rice dish. I'll use them with that. Um, so, Sounds good. A few ideas. Yeah, I actually have um, some pulled pork in a crock pot out in the kitchen right now that uh, should be done. About <laughs> done with garden chatter. Yeah. Uh, but I was just mentioning that because um, it the recipe called for some thyme in it. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, um, we had a, a, I had a tweet sort of more directly to meet from. Permian, um, he's in Eugene, Oregon, or she actually, I'm not sure, um, who was just wondering, so when you do your recipe for the soil, it's two parts, you're using peat moss, and then perlite and vermiculite, one and yep. one? Okay, and that makes a nice, okay. Just right, right, and what I do is I have a big, I just got like a big Rubbermaid tub, Okay. so I just mix it all in there, and I, you know, I Mix the concentrate in there, and then you wet it down, okay? Because you really, it works better if you pre-wet before you um, plant your plants in it. So I will wet it and stir it up and wet it again and let it sit for like 20 minutes. And then it works better. It doesn't dry out so much once it's in the container. Okay. How fun. So, um, have you seen any er different varieties that you're excited about this year? As far as different herbs? Yes, I'm sorry. Um, no, no, that's okay. That's okay. Um, like I said, the, the za'atar I was really excited about for the um, for the marjoram. The basil, I have like several different basils. Mm -hmm. um, I did try some new different herbs, you know, this year. Uh, savory is the herb of the year. So I did plant um, some savory. I thought I brought, no, well, I thought I was had brought one in, but um, I did. Oh, wait, I did. Sorry. Look at it. Sitting right here in my water. I forgot. So a lot of people don't know what savory is. We were talking about this on Twitter one night. And this is what um, savory looks like. It looks a little bit, you know, kind of like a, a rosemary type thing, only mm -hmm. it's got, you know, a softer square stem. And it grows just, it grows more like an oregano. So it kind of looks like a rosemary, but it grows more like um, an oregano. Okay. And um, it's a little bit heavier of an herb. Mm -hmm. And I'm still exploring what I'm going to do with it. It's supposed to be good in, with meats and things like that. I haven't actually cooked with it yet, but I'm excited to. 
And yeah. Um, yeah. hopefully I'll be doing some new posts and some tweets and things like that uh, about yeah. the different uses that I'm finding for it. It is, it is just kind of an interesting herb. It just kind of goes all over the place. So yeah. It's kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Well, before we wrap it up um, this after or evening, I guess, um, I was wondering if we could talk about some of the, the benefits of herbs for beneficial insects. Because even if you didn't harvest the herbs, they are fantastic for attracting uh, beneficials. So they are. They are. Herbs are great, um, especially for attracting aphids. Now, I actually made a list because Adam and I were talking about this. Um, and I don't know, a lot of people can remember all that kind of stuff, and I was like, I just need a list. So honestly, I'm going to do a post about this in the next couple of weeks, if, or next couple in the next couple of days, I mean, because mm -hmm. you just kind of need it written down. Um, but some great herbs for aphids. I mean, we all have problems with aphids, don't we? Yeah. Um, that um, can repel them. Basil can, catnip, chives. Uh, coriander, those all, you know, can actually repel those type of insects. And so, if you plant those, like if you plant basil along with your tomatoes and things like that, it will keep your garden um, healthier. Now, if you're trying to attract good um, insects, you know, like your lace wings and actually your paper wasps are good, um, your ground beetles, your lady beetles. All those kinds of insects are the ones that you want in your garden. Um, some good ones are yarrow, lavender. We all like lavender. Not all of us, but I do. Yeah. Mint, um, angelica, dill, parsley, and cilantro. Those are all really good herbs to have in your garden um, that will work well and get those good insects into your, into your garden. So, awesome. Um, the other thing I did want to share is that we were also talking on Twitter about having um, uh, grubs and uh, uh, Japanese beetles and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. A good plant to have, and it's not necessarily one that um, you might eat, although chives would be considered, would, are your alliums family. Okay, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, but like your chives, if you plant chives by your roses, um, that is, and because, or by your clematis, if you have trouble with Japanese beetles, that will help that. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah I don't try that. <laughs> I wonder what they don't. I wonder what they don't like the flower or the green. Who knows? Yeah. You know what? I don't. I don't know. I don't know which part of the plant it is, or if it's. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a smell, or yeah. I don't know what it is, but um, supposedly, you know, it will. I can't. I can't believe in that. There, I saw somewhere online, um, someone had shared to keep deer out of your roses to plant certain herbs near the roses, and I actually have a few that are in my front meadow garden of, you know, roses, the deer just love to mow down on them, right? And <laughs> I, I, I ended up, I just planted, um, oh gosh, what did I put in there? I just put uh, like a creeping oregano. Um, which oh can, yeah, I heard about that. Mm -hmm. and it, it seems to be working. I don't know if yeah. that's just, but yeah, so they'll pass up that bed and then they head right over for the David Austin. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should plant some herbs over there to too. <laughs> But who knows? <laughs> who knows? Well, here's a, okay. So this might be a little off the herbs, but you know, um, I'm trying to be as most people more organic in my yard okay. and um, not do the pesticides. And so we really didn't put anything on our dandelions this year. Mm -hmm. And I have this really horrible rabbit problem, though. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we ended up doing is we didn't spray with the dandelions, and I ended up putting all cages around my uh, food, the edibles that the rabbits like. Well, guess who's eating my dandelions? The rabbits are eating my dandelions. It's really? awesome. <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, those whole organic thing. I don't know if you've heard of, you know, rent a goat or something, you know. My <laughs> yeah. husband's like, we should rent more rabbits. Let's get more rabbits out here. My backyard is totally clean. It doesn't look like I have any dandelions at all. And I'm like, okay, guys, you have to go to the front yard now because the front yard could use a little bit of work. So there's an interesting way of how nature really does take care of some things. Yeah. So you have to grab the right stuff and, and do it um, 
do it more organically and look for different solutions rather than just throwing pesticides down. Okay. Yeah, I was um, really interested that the um, well, there's one kind of fly that will eat the uh, it lays its eggs on the squash bugs hmm. and also stink bugs. And Is that the hoverfly? Oh well, those I don't. I think those the larvae um, are the predators. Okay. I need to check on that, but the tachinid flies um, are attracted to herbs, particularly, and they lay their uh, eggs on the, the larvae or the other eggs of, like, squash bugs, and, you know, there's about, I guess, about 1,500 different kinds of tachinid flies. They look like little house flies, but they have, like, little bristly some. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. so. I know that there's some types of... Um, of the little bees that do that too. What are they called? The um, well, there's the hoverflies that look like little bees. Okay, that's what I'm. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. Right, that's what I'm thinking. And they look like the little bees, the striped bees, and so they yeah. lay their larvae. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so lots of good insects um, to to be had. With yeah, those. I mean, insects would be a great. You know, like you could talk all day long and learn so much about insects and how the whole thing just. Yeah. Um, Interacts. Oops, did we lose Bryn? Uh oh. Oh, she's here. Am I there? Okay. <laughs> well, Bryn, did we have any last questions from anyone that, that you see? Or no, that's what I'm just checking. There's a few people that are tweeting along with us. They, uh, Angie Rose of the Freckled Rose. She appreciated the chive planted with rose tip that you gave, and um. That's about it. That looks good. That was fun. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. Beth, where can people find you? I know you blog about herbs, so where could they find your blog? Yep, I blog at morethanoregano.com. And uh, so I blog about herbs and uh, flowers and veggies and pollinators. And this summer we have um, a real special feature going on called um, the Growing Now Garden Tour. And so that's on Fridays. Um, the first two were kind of uh, blog hops. We had several people uh, linking up and sharing their gardens. And then now as we move more into the summer, that was kind of our kickoff. Uh, now every Friday we're going to be um, featuring um, a different garden and what's growing now in the garden. Um, and we're also going to be seeing it on social media, hashtag grow now 2015. Um, go ahead, whatever is growing in your garden now, we'd love you to uh, tweet that out. Um, you can also uh, Instagram it out. And uh, I think it's just a fun way for real gardeners who are um, growing real food and real things in their gardens to just show and share what it is that they're growing. So it'll just make fun, or some are more fun, inspire more people to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight, Beth. I really appreciate you taking the time out. It's been wonderful talking with you. Thanks for having me. It's been fun. I do love to talk about herbs. If you have any questions, go ahead and tweet them out to me still or stop by the blog and leave a comment. I love comments. Yeah. <laughs> you're, fun, you're fun to tweet with. If someone's looking for you, they can just find you at, Bill, or at Beth Billstrom. Easy enough. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Well, thanks again.